In this Hubnut video, sponsored by Lancaster Insurance, Tuck's going for an MOT and it's really windy. It's not going to be fun. So yeah, um, it, it's MOT time for Tuck. Um, she did have an MOT um, over a year ago, uh, which she, she did need. I did need that to get her back on the road again um, because of changing taxation class and things like that. But this time she doesn't actually need an MOT and it actually ran out um, uh, a few weeks ago, um, but she was not running very well. So she didn't go for that one. Right, let's just back her up slightly. Just because she's sitting on a chock. Oh, Tuck, you're very smoky. Stop doing that. Let's do a bit less choke. <laughs> Boxer engines can sometimes do that. If the valve guides aren't very good, they can kind of fill their cylinders with oil. I'm going to assume that's what's happening and that she's not fatally wounded. Ugh. Right. For what it's worth, I shall put my seatbelt on. And if we go for an MOT. So yeah, because she's over 40 years old, she doesn't legally need an MOT, but it just sounds stupid to me to not have a basic safety check on your car especially given how um, hard I drive this one um, I'm a little annoyed we're gonna be just shy of 2,000 miles since she first got back on the road or since I first ran her in the garage she had 28 436 I think or was it 346 but yeah I mean it tells you how many miles we've done quite a lot really Oh, those revs are too high for the clutch to disengage. Uh, I fitted a new washer. The comedy washer is just cable tied to the bar, but that's fine. It works for what we need. So I have to keep it just in the clutch until the revs drop sufficiently for us to engage drive. No. There we go. Put the bungee in place because that's still necessary apparently and uh, there we go we shall go for an MOT Ooh, look at that big space behind the Mazda that's going to be full on Sunday right Ben Runkoch that's where we're going 12 miles from my house and this is the first drive I had in Tuk last year, repeated. Complete with Ford. brakes. Yep, they work. Still a bit of snow on the hilltops. I could have gone the main road route, but it's too windy and uh, the faster you go in the Invercar, the more terrifying the wind gets. So this way is better because we're, we're not going to go that quickly and there's not very much to hit. Incidentally, I filled up the other day, 34 MPG. Uh, so still not an economy machine, but only about 20 or maybe 30 of those miles were done on the new belts and pulleys. So there's still potential fuel savings to be had. The gravel left in the middle of the road, not much fun in a three-wheeler. Oh, it's starting to steam up a bit. I 
think I've reached the decision we've took. I think I'm going to try and take her back home in May. And I'm going to try and combine that trip with attending the Retro Rides Weekender. That takes place on the 18th and 19th of May at Goodwood. And I thought, ah, oh, a chance to take an Invercar around Goodwood. Or at least, you know, to the track, even if we don't go around it. I think that's got to be taken. So, um, that is currently the plan to travel over in the week before and um, yeah have a massive adventure in tour so Goodwood is about 260 miles from my house but I think Thundersley in Essex where this car was built was even is even further away so um, exciting times to come here on Hubnut I won't say Planet Hubnut because someone said, oh Planet Hubnut, that's funky the other day. And someone else said, that's just stupid. Which I think sums up internet comments quite well. Oh, this road is marvellous fun at 25 miles an hour. This is the Nantamoch region. Uh, Bay of Pigs or River of Pigs, I think. Mochin is your pig in Welsh. I've never seen any pigs here. So, tree Mochin Bach is um, three little pigs in Welsh. So there you go, you now know a bit of Welsh. Five tonne weight limit, I don't think that's going to be an issue today. We're not even 500 kilograms. Try and not fall in the lake maybe. Well, there we go, she passed, so that's all good. Um, uh, I can now drive home, so um, there's the mileage. 30,325 miles this year. We'll see how many she can do in the next year. I mean, there's a slight difficulty, but I'm thinking of vanishing for a, a fair chunk of this year to go gallivanting around the world. Um, so, um, but you know, we've got road trips planned. Um, there's things to do. So um, yeah, we shall see what occurs. Um, right. No, just a small matter of driving home. Right, decided we really need to put these pulleys to the test. So I'll, I'm going to go and head to the steepest hill I know around here. It's one of the steepest hills in Wales. Let's deal with the uh, mini roundabout first of all. So it should be a pretty good test. We're here in Llambad and Var in um, mid Wales and this is where things get really steep momentum it's still not fast is it But I can hear the engine revs are still up, so that's just why it's going to be up this one. This is first gear in Ellie, to be fair. This is a horrendous hill. I wouldn't dare come down it the other way.
well done Tuck. She did it. I might go and get some cheesecake to celebrate the MOT pass. And Tuck can have a service. I've got oil and filters and spark plugs waiting for her at home. Oh, I should make the um, school kids laugh. Look at that for a view. Can you even see that view? You probably can't see that view. Oh, the, the sea beyond Aberystwyth. We are driving directly towards it. But I don't think the angle lets you see that. Sorry. But yeah, I mean, previously I've taken her down this hill and I've not had to brake. Uh, I'm having to brake to control the speed today. So that means she must be better. Good way of letting her cool down after that um, massive hill climb. She's done it, look. She's done 2,000 miles since I found her in a field in November 2017. Well done, Took. So, yeah, this is the spot where Took clocked up her 2,000th mile. Um, how very different life is to when I found her abandoned in a field in Sussex, where she sat for 14 years. And um, it's been an amazing um, year and a bit, to be honest. Um, I don't think I realised when I found this car just how popular she'd be with you, the internet, and people on the street. I mean, forget Lamborghinis. If you want to get a girl's attention, get an Invercar. Um, not saying she'll want to marry you, but she'll certainly laugh at you, and that's a good start, isn't it? It's always good to make someone laugh, um, or at least smile. And um, this car does that. It makes so many people smile. It, it's just wonderful. I love driving it just for the reactions. But, um, yeah, we shall go and have further adventures in Project Invercar. Uh, a lot more still to do, a lot more fun to be had, and, um, yeah, many more adventures to come. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you especially if you've been watching right from the start of Project Invercar. Um, I don't think I really imagined this when I first found that car. I mean, the first challenge was just to get a working at all. But we finally got the transmission working and, well, there isn't much else. Everything seems to work. So um, she can now have a much needed service and a very well deserved one. And um, yeah, we can call that um, first year and a bit um, complete. A shame we didn't quite manage to do it on the year, that would have been even better, but there you go. So I shall say, uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget the Hubnut merchandise. We've got Tuk t-shirts, um, we may do another batch of Tuk hoodies, it remains to be seen. If you're very small, then good luck, good news rather, because we have very small um, Tuk hoodies in stock. But um, yeah, oh and Tuk mugs. But yeah, thank you, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. What a day.